The Public Affairs Committee PAC has a role to play all year round, ensuring that our young democracy is well nurtured and advanced so that it benefits all Malawians, regardless of their socio-economic status in society. PAC Secretariat is always busy strategizing to protect the tenets of good governance and our budding democracy. The the Therefore, it is in this vein that between the 29th and 30th of April 2014, it organized an interfaith advocacy conference on peace at Mount Sochi Hotel in Blanta for different faith leaders and their representatives as the country was heading towards the first ever and historic tripartite elections. The theme for the conference was Peace and Unity, a prerequisite to free, credible and fair elections 2014, just the way the Malawi Electoral Commission wanted it. That time around, the discussions were centered very much on the role of religious institutions in the electoral process that was towards, during and after elections. The purpose of the conference was to make the elections free, fair and credible. The format of the conference did not differ much with the previous ones, commonly known as the all-inclusive conferences, as topics for presentations were lined up. Remember, the Public Affairs Committee is a civil society interfaith organization made up of the main Protestant, Catholic and Muslim faith groups in Malawi. It operates in the areas of good governance and human rights. PAC is composed of Episcopal Conference of Malawi, Malawi Council of Churches, Evangelical Association of Malawi, Kadria Association of Malawi, and Muslim Association of Malawi. From these main faith groups, PAC draws 24 member organizations and four associate members. PAC began as a broad-based movement for change from the one-party system to multi-party democracy between the years 1992 and 1994. It was led by the religious community and included political pressure groups and other interested groups. Following the political transition, PAC remained a faith-based organization focusing on the democratization process. In 1995, PAC established a permanent secretariat to manage its programs. We now take you to the conference Mount Sochi Hotel, Njamba Room, but first the opening remarks by chairperson of Public Affairs Committee. We are meeting here as representatives of the faith community in this country. And our meeting is very significant indeed. This is, as we all know, the 50th anniversary of our existence as an independent sovereign state. In fact, it has been pointed out to me, I remember when we were doing some of the, these uh, interfaces with the presidential candidate. One of them did mention, and pointed out to me, that for the past 150 years, every, every 50th year has been a turning point in our history. So if we count backwards, uh, 50 years backwards, it would be 1964. And it was, it was in that year that we attained our independence from colonial rule. 50 years going backwards, it would be very close to um, 1914 or 1915, thereabout. And you remember then it was the rising of Chilembe rising. A combination, or more or less you want to put, put it, a combination of African resistance to the imposition of colonial administration. 
of course, since the colonial administration came in around 1891 or so, uh, Africans have been were resisting. We talk about the native associations that were established from 1912 and so on, and it culminated in the uh, Chilembe Rising 1915. Very significant period indeed. And you go again 50 years backwards, you come to very close to, nine, to 1864 or so, around about that time. A very significant year also when the first Christian missionaries arrived in the country under the leadership of Bishop Mackenzie. They established themselves at, at Magomero. So every 50th year in our history has been a turning point. And therefore this year is very significant indeed. So according to this way of reckoning or calculating years, this year must be therefore be, be seen as a significant juncture in the history of our country. For the first time, we shall have tripartite elections. And of course, we've been reminded uh, in, the, in the devotion that uh, we are more or less living in a in critical period. Uh, economically, there's economic crisis, security crisis, a political crisis, and so on. There are, for the first time, 12 presidential candidates. This year is a very critical year. They said that the moral decay in the nation's fabric has been uncovered through what has been known as the Cascade Scandal. This then, you can say, is a year, one would put it, a Kairos moment, if I can use that word. Kairos is a very critical time when important decisions have to be made. And one such event in the Kairos period is our meeting this morning. And therefore, I regard our meeting this morning to be very important indeed, taking place in the 50th year of our independence. What I have just said assumes a certain understanding of what is history. Topics for discussions are arrived at after thorough research befitting and depicting the situation on the ground and doing their presentations are well-respected sons and daughters of Malawi, well-versed in their areas of expertise. Four presentations were made, and they were general political developments, security situation during the electoral process, the role of religious institutions in the electoral process, and triggers of violence in an electoral process. Chris Chisoni from the Catholic Commission for Justice and Peace, CCJP, was mandated to take the delegates through the general political developments to ensure that the 2014 tripartite elections are free from violence. PAC saw it fit to look at factors that can trigger violence during an election, and as such, there was one presentation tailor-made to tackle this issue presented by Dr. Makolo Wondo. But why exactly should we care about electoral violence? Every conference organized by the Public Affairs Committee has aims, and it is important that we are taken through some of these aims. Basically, we are looking at uh, three objectives in this conference. One is to sensitize the senior clergy in terms of uh, the whole electoral process, uh, in terms of the observations, issues that have emerged over uh, you know, the period. You recall that we have had a number of conferences, but so far we have focused different stakeholders. It could be civil society, it could be you know, those from trade unions, uh, from different sectors, we invited them through all-inclusive conferences. But so far, we didn't take this opportunity to invite the key clergy 
to deliberate on certain issues of national importance, democratic governance, but at the same time the electoral process as a whole, the situation in terms of the peace and security, all these issues we thought the uh, key clergy should also be exposed to, 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 to these issues. Uh, but also it's uh, an opportunity for the key clergy to come up with the one voice uh, in terms of how the electoral process is moving. We are approaching the 20 May polls and uh, there is a lot of, you know, perhaps competition at the moment in terms of the campaigns, but at the same time issues of violence are likely perhaps to come up at a later stage and therefore as a faith community we felt that we should come up with the one voice in terms of how we prepare ourselves to deal with peace and security. One question that bothers the politicians regarding PAC's conferences is the timing of such conferences. Why did PAC decide to do the conference at that point in time? The um, campaigns are getting hotter and hotter and we thought it is proper that as people are campaigning for the elections we also come in and then we try to speak as faith leaders on how we can motivate people, first of all, to go and vote. Secondly, be ready to accept the results as they come. Because if people are not prepared for the outcome of the results, then that provokes a recipe for disaster. It could be refusing the outcome, it could be uh, maybe not being happy with whatever has come out. So we thought as religious leaders, we need to come together, prepare the people psychologically so that they are ready for whatever comes out of the results. Time to sample views and opinions towards the first ever and historic tripartite elections from the society. The expectations are very high. Uh, since these are the first kind of the elections to have uh, tripartite, uh, tripartite elections in Malawi, uh, we expect uh, the uh, elections to be running smoothly. Uh, we expect credible elections. Uh, that's on my uh, views as for the conducting of the elections itself. Uh, for the expectations, uh, at least we expect something very high. Uh, you know, uh, our MPs have been uh, um, running their roles as MPs as well as councillors. So I believe there will be separate of powers, separation of powers, that is, uh, in terms of uh, development. Uh, our MPs are there to make laws, uh, laws that are suitable for Malawians out there. But then councillors are there to, uh, to develop the areas out there. So I believe we expect something uh, very high from them because there will be separation of powers. We expect a lot from the councillors in terms of development. By the end of the two-day conference, participants had gained knowledge for their own benefit and that of society. You know, this uh, conference organized by Public Affairs Committee has been very, very important on a number of areas. Uh, the first one, uh, we have been highlighted the conflicts and the gaps that are in the constitution of the Republic of Malawi. Uh, you may recall some of the sections, like Section 6, Section 77, and even Section 80, Subsection 2. These sections are not actually, they are not emphasizing to say the only people who are supposed uh, to vote are registered voters. Uh, those sections have highlighted us to tell us to say all the citizens of Malawi, all the people. Now, that is something that I never thought of, but it is there in the Constitution. So to me, it was very important. And this also tells us to say definitely um, these are some of the issues that can be raised. We have learned a lot yeah? and I'm encouraging them to continue, you know, teaching us, having, you know, some conferences because we are learning a lot. You know? My first thing is going to sensitize the people who be around me from the task team and also where I live, where I pray, uh, every group that I meet be it women groups, youth groups, or any group, I'll discuss about this issue. That we have to at least have a free and fair elections. We have to accept anything. We as Muslims, what we're going to do is uh, to use the ceremony done on Fridays. 
we are going to tell the chefs that uh, they should preach unity and they should avoid hate speeches. Some of issues that are taking place in mosques and churches of now, that of um, somebody on the pulpit is dictating to the congregation which candidate to vote for. We believe this is uncalled for because within the congregation there are people that belong to different parties. And considering that we were heading towards elections, PAC decided to meet Merck instantly and it happened that they met the highly delegate Merck officials led by their chairperson Maxon Mandela. PAC outlined issues raised in the interfaith conference and other issues that had engulfed Merck as we went to the 2014 tripartite elections. Public Affairs Committee, PAC, has always been there and will always be there for a common Malawian and indeed for all Malawians. It will never get tired organizing such conferences, be it before or after an election. Malawians, you have only one choice of partnering with PAC if our country is to forge ahead socially and economically by ushering into government leaders that have the welfare of ordinary Malawian at heart. Remember, true democracy is by the people and for the people. Mm -hmm.